All right, well, good morning to all of you. It is um, really great to be together this morning. Sunny and cold, that's what I like, sunny and cold. That's what we've got today. And uh, hey, if I haven't had a chance to say Happy New Year to you yet, if I missed you last week, well, Happy New Year to you. We're off to a good start, hopefully. And um, if you don't know me, if you're new, my name is Steve. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'll be bringing God's Word to us today. And today, in particular, you'll need one of these connection cards. So hopefully you got one as you came in. If you didn't, I'm going to pray here in a moment, and you could sneak out to the back and get one while I'm praying. It'll be just really important for our response time today, okay? So uh, let's do pray together and ask the Lord to minister to us from his word. So Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, another day to be alive, to have breath in our lungs, to serve you. Lord, we are glad to be in the house of God today. And Lord, you know my prayer all week is that your spirit would minister to each individual person in the seats in front of me today, Lord, showing them what their next step is in their walk with you. And I do pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, last Sunday on January 1st, 2023, A.D., Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, I challenged you to recenter your life in the new year, right on the front end of a brand new year, to refocus your attention and your heart on three great things. If you remember anything about that sermon at all, would you lift your hand? Oh, good. Praise God. We, we pastors wonder sometimes how much things stick, you know, so... So we talked about uh, recentering, refocusing on three great things, right? The great commandment, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. The great commission, go make disciples, help other people become followers of Jesus. And the great exchange, just rejoicing in and reveling in all that Jesus has done for us including taking our sins and giving us his righteousness, right? The great exchange. And I would say to the extent that we are able to do that, to recenter and refocus our lives on those things, we're going to be in a better position and poised and ready, I believe, to take the next step on our spiritual journey. And that's what I felt led to talk about today. You see, the Bible describes this life of following Jesus in a variety of ways, but two of the most common analogies are these. Walking with Jesus is like, excuse me, following Jesus is like taking a walk, taking steps, walking with him, and following Jesus is like running a race. Taking a walk, running a race. Both of those images involve what? Setting out on a journey, getting on a pathway, and making progress by moving forward. And we know that both of those things require taking steps in order to make progress. Taking steps. And we know about steps, right? We like steps. Steps are good. These days our smart devices can track our actual steps all throughout the day. How many of you do that, by the way? I'm just curious. Oh, more more than I thought. Yeah, last week... An excited friend shoved his device right in my face and said, look, Steve, look, I've already surpassed my steps goal for the day. I'm really excited about that. We all know that. It's a good thing to get our steps in every day, right? You know, what our, what our devices, what our smartwatches can't do is tell us if the steps that we're taking are in the right direction. Maybe that's another whole nother app, right? But we'd all agree that It's healthy and important for our lives to keep taking steps, to keep moving forward. Amen? So my question for you today is very simple, and it's this. Are you ready? Are you ready to take your next step with God? I don't claim to know exactly what that particular next step is for your life. I believe everybody's journey is unique and personalized and customized, but what I am contending is that there is a next step for you. There's a next step, no matter where you're at on this journey or how long you've been walking with Jesus, there's a next step. 
And if you haven't yet begun your spiritual journey with Christ, there are some first steps, some initial steps for you to take to get you onto that path. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. So, running your race, walking with God. This is a concept that's found all throughout Scripture from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation. And what I'd like to do today is do a quick little Bible study with you. And I think we could do this with either of these analogies, running the race or walking with God. But, but I want to hone in on just that second one, walking with God, taking a walk, journeying together with God. How does the Bible talk about that? How does Scripture convey that notion, and what does it say about it? So we're going to look at this together with some scriptures, okay? So the first one, Genesis 6, 9. Noah, how many of you remember Noah? Noah was a righteous man, it says, blameless in his generation, and Noah walked with God. He walked with God. And that language is likely drawn from the account of Adam and Eve a few chapters earlier in Genesis, where it says that they walked with God in the Garden of Eden. Imagine that. So Noah walked with God in a way like Adam and Eve walked with God. And this notion of walking together with somebody pictures several things. It pictures companionship, right, when you're walking with someone. It pictures trust. It pictures communication. And I think it pictures just enjoying being together when you're taking a walk together. Noah walked with God, which also means God walked with Noah. And that kind of talk really is stunning Far different from how most ancient pagan deities related to earthlings. But what hope this brings to us to think that relating to our creator in this way is even possible for us human beings. That we and God can actually walk and talk together on life's journey. I hope you're experiencing that. I hope you're experiencing what Noah experienced, walking with God. And if you say, well, I don't know how to do that, just keep listening. Psalm 86, 11 says, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. So, walking with God is walking in truth. That's because God is truth. God defines truth. He defines reality. To walk with God is to walk in truth, and to walk away from God then is to walk in error to walk in lies, to walk in deception. And really, who would want that? Walking with God. So Proverbs 9, 6 says, Leave your simple ways and live, and walk in the way of insight. So walking with God means acquiring insight from the Lord and leaving simple and foolish ways behind. And that can happen for us because when we walk with God, when we walk with him, he communicates with us. He guides our lives. He imparts to us his thoughts, his perspective on things. Related to that is Isaiah 2.5, where it says, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. And so we learn that walking with God is walking in the light, walking in illumination with, with clear vision, seeing things as they really are. Here's a famous verse you may have heard, Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And that tells us that walking with the Lord done rightly is a humbling thing. It's a humbling thing for us humans. We walk with God in humility because we realize that the one that we're walking with is not our equal. He's not our peer. He is the mighty God, the creator of all things, who has condescended to come down to our level in order to relate to us. Amen? Are you thankful for the condescension of God? I am. 
It's a great privilege to walk with God, and we should be humbled by it, and we should be ever mindful of it. We come into the New Testament in John 12, and it says, Jesus said to them, the light is among you for a little while longer. Who's he talking about? Himself, the light of the world, right? The light is among you for a little while longer, so walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. So this reveals to us that in this era, walking with God means walking with Jesus, the light, the one who was here for a little while, but then returned to where he came from. But that didn't mean that people could no longer walk with him. We can still walk together because he sent his spirit, amen, to live within us, and he never leaves us alone on our journey. Romans 6 says, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also should walk in newness of life. New life. Sounds like a good name for a church. (laughs) To walk with God is to live out a new kind of life, God's life. In the Greek, it's zoe. That's the word. There was a girl group for a while, Zoe Girl. That's what it was about. God's life that he's birthed within all of us who have been raised up spiritually, who put our faith and our trust in Jesus. How about this one? You've heard this before. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 4. We walk by faith, not by sight. Say walk by faith. Walk by faith. This journey that we're on is a faith walk. And people who've walked with God for a while understand this. It's trusting in God even though we can't see him. He's invisible to our natural eyes. It's continuing to trust him even when you don't see any change in your situation, any movement, any results. It's continuing to put one foot in front of another day by day by day, walking by faith, taking each step by faith. I love this verse, Ephesians 4.1. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, this is the Apostle Paul writing, imprisoned in chains for Jesus, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. Here we're introduced to this concept of the worthy walk. Walk worthy of your calling. A wonderful concept. And what it means is this, living up to who we are now. Living up to our new identity in Christ. Amen? It means living up to our calling as saints, as holy ones, as redeemed, as forgiven, as empowered by the Holy Spirit. Walk worthy. Worthy of your calling, he writes, your elevated calling from God. And what that means is it's beautiful. It means that we're not called to try to be something that we're not. We're simply called to live up to who we are. Big difference. Big difference. Trying to live up to something you're not is exhausting. It's exhausting. But living up to who we are is soul-fueling. Now this I say, Ephesians 4, 17, and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. So evidently walking with God means walking away from something else, walking away from the old life, from the old paths, leaving behind the worldly ways of your old friends and that empty way of thinking that is so enamored, so consumed with this world and has no room for God, no room for his ways. It's saying to those friends, and some of you have had to say this, I, I'm, just, I'm on a different path now. I'm on a different path. And then this, Ephesians 5, 2, walk in love. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. This is that great exchange, right? a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So this is the new path. 
It's the way of love. This is living out the new commandment that we talked about. Walking with God means walking in love. Love for him and love for other people. And I would say this. If you're truly walking with God, the God who is love will lead you into a life of love. Of loving God more and more and loving your neighbor as yourself more and more. Ephesians 5.8. Are you enjoying this little Bible study? I am. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. It's, it's kind of as if we who have been born again have, have left this room that was just totally dark, where we couldn't see anything, nothing was visible, and we've come out into a new space that's bright and illuminated, and we can see everything clearly, walking in the light And in fact, it says here that we're not just in the light. What does it say? You are light. And of course, our Lord told us that, right? You're the light of the world. We have God's light in us, so it emanates from our very being. Yes, it even shows on our faces, our countenances. 5.15 of Ephesians, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. And so the worthy walk is a wise walk where we distance ourselves from foolishness and we increasingly make decisions and go in directions that are wise, that align with the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of this world, that makes sense to him, maybe not to others. Have you noticed something? Have you noticed how people who have walked with God for a long, long, long time are just wiser than people who haven't? Instead of becoming crusty, crotchety, cranky, calcified old codgers, instead they become wise ones, sages, people that the rest of us can seek out and look up to. And I think one of the beautiful things about being in a multi-generational church like we are in here is that those in the younger generations have the opportunity to draw alongside people who have walked with the Lord for many, many years, maybe even longer than they've been alive, and glean from them and learn from them, learn their stories, hear their stories, and even learn to mimic their ways to imitate their lifestyle. And by doing that, to grow in wisdom also. And I would say to you, if you're under 35, for one, you're young. And I would say, in my humble opinion, if you're under 35, you'd be wise to pursue a discipling relationship or to seek out a mentoring relationship with a seasoned man or seasoned woman in this church who is far ahead of you on this journey. They have experience that you don't yet have. They know the Lord in ways you don't know him yet. But you could learn from them. You could glean from them. I know they're not as tech savvy as you. I know they don't get some things about your generation and your music and stuff. That's okay. Just just look past that and look at how you could benefit from being in a relationship like that. I urge you to consider taking that step. Colossians 1.10 says, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. I love this next phrase, fully pleasing to him. Fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So walking with God means living your life, seeking to please God above everyone else. Pleasing the Lord. It means seeking the smile of God more than the approval of men and women means increasing in the knowledge of God, learning his character, learning his ways, and it means, as it says here, bearing fruit, which is a biblical and agricultural way of saying that you're seeking to gain spiritual influence in the lives of other people. Spiritual influence. That's right. Walking with God has this element of wanting to bring other people along with you on this journey. Like, come on, let's do this together investing in their lives that's what it means to bear fruit colossians 2 6 therefore as you receive christ jesus the lord so walk in him don't you love that 
that's kind of summarized, walk in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. That's a great description, isn't it? You know anybody like that? Rooted, grounded, established, anchored to unchanging truths, not blown around by every new cultural wind that sweeps across the landscape. And grateful, abounding in thanksgiving. You know, people who walk with God are grateful people. They're thankful. You know why? Because they see clearly. They understand that they're receiving from the hand of God way, way more than they deserve. And they are thankful. They feel blessed just to be alive for another day and be able to serve Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4.1, Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and please God, just as you are doing, that you do this more and more. So this helps us understand that walking with God is a progressive journey. More and more. You don't ever come to a point where you can say, okay, well, I'm done with this walk. I've arrived. No more steps to take. I'm at my destination. Not in this life. God desires to keep taking you to new places, even if you're in your 90s. And we have a few of those wonderful folks, nanogenarians, I think they're called. Listen, there are more steps to take, more insights to gain. There are more truths to learn, and there are more people to influence for Christ. It's a continual, lifelong journey of taking step after step after step with Christ, all the way until you see him. As one man said, it is a marathon race, not a 100-yard dash. Now, think about this from 1 John chapter 1. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, us and God. And the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Now, we need to get this. This is important. People who walk with God want to be open with God. They want to maintain transparency with the Lord. They, they know the pitfalls of hiding, of secrecy. And so they're willing to bring stuff out into the light to expose it. Why? So they can be cleansed and forgiven. They, they know they've taken some wrong turns. They know they've taken some missteps along their journey that took them off the path and detoured them away from God, and they're willing to own it. I'll say it now, I'll mention it again later. For some of you, for some of you, your next step is to repent of your last step. Or a previous misstep that you took that took you off, veered you off from God's path. And you could pray a prayer like this. I prayed this prayer many times. Lord Jesus, I stepped off the path that you laid out for me. And now I find myself feeling far from you, distant from you. That was so wrong of me, so foolish. At the time, I thought it was a good step, but it's proven to not be so. So forgive me, Lord, for the sake of Christ. I was wrong to go that way. This is my prayer of repentance. I need to go back to that fork in the road, at least in my mind, that fork where I got off, and take the other path. I need to return to your path. You ever prayed a prayer like that? I sure have. And the beautiful thing about the Lord is he will always forgive us. Amen. He will always take us back. Always. 1 John 2, 6. Whoever says he abides in him, Jesus, ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So to walk with Christ means to reflect Christ. In a sense, to live like Jesus would live if Jesus were here in your skin. To mimic his walk, to imitate his ways instead of following the ways of the flesh or the ways of this world. It's living like Jesus. So there's a little Bible study we did together. Hope it was helpful. It was to me. I'd like to just summarize it by making a few key points. Walking with God, walking with God is something God wants for all of us. 
God wants to walk with you. Walking with God was only made possible for us by Jesus. It's the only way we can walk with God, because he opened the door. Walking with God does not mean being more religious, thank God. It means cultivating a growing love companionship with the Lord. Walking with God has many benefits for your life, both now and forever. Walking with God requires you to take more steps. And number six, everybody has a next step on their journey with Jesus, which again begs that question I asked earlier, what is your next step? Do you know what it is? What's that next step the Lord is calling you to take on your journey with him? Are you clear on it? Some of you are clear. Some of you know in your heart exactly what that next step is that Jesus is calling you to take with him. Maybe you're eager and ready to take that step, to step out in faith, to make some spiritual progress, and I would urge you to do it. If you know what the step is, I would urge you to resolve in your heart to do it. Right in this moment, right now, to just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, whatever the Lord is leading you to, by the power of the Spirit, some of you do know what your next step is. And it's just a matter of obeying Christ and stepping out in faith. But my experience as a pastor tells me that many, many, many of you sitting in this room right now are not quite so clear. The path forward for you is a bit murky. It's a bit hazy. Maybe you see a number of possible stepping stones in front of you. And you're not sure which one you're supposed to take. Or maybe you see other people taking this step or that step and you're wondering, should I be taking that? Should I be doing that? They are. In all honesty, I suspect hundreds of us just aren't really quite sure what our next step is. You know, through the years, some pastors and authors have attempted to lay out a prescribed program, a linear sequence of steps that every believer should take. Like, here's step one, then step two, then step three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For a while, it was fashionable in evangelical Christianity to throw a baseball diamond up on the screen or up on the wall somewhere and say, hey, here's, here's your steps. You go to first base and then second base and do this, third base, do this, then you go home and do this. In fact, 25 years ago, a pastor friend and I wrote a discipleship manual together based on that very concept. It laid out some wonderful steps for people to take in a very neat and clean sequence that made it very simple for anybody to follow. And and the steps were really great. But over time, people came to realize some things. For one, some believers found that in their experience, third base actually came before second base. And they realized that even though they took the the prescribed steps out of order, that it was okay for them. It became clear that the actual sequence of steps wasn't necessarily the same for everybody. Everybody's journey is personal, isn't it? Individual. And then, of course, people realized that there are way more than four bases (laughs) or steps to take in our walk with Jesus. And that we never really go sliding into home and then head over to the dugout and sit down and say, well, I guess I'm done. I scored. So while the concept was well-intentioned, it was a bit oversimplified. It fell short of reality. It didn't really match the more personalized and nuanced idea that walking with God is in the Scriptures. But having said that, I want to be clear. There are a sequence of steps on your journey with Jesus, your walk with Jesus, and there is a next step for you. It just might not be the same step that the person seated next to you needs to take. So at the risk of oversimplifying things myself or being misunderstood, may I be so bold today as to suggest some possible next steps, one of which just might be your next step that the Lord is calling you to take. Now, as I said earlier, I would contend that there are some pretty clearly defined initial steps For starting out on this journey, first steps kind of through the turnstile that have to be taken in order to get on the path in the first place and begin your walk with Jesus. These then are some of the key first steps towards God. 
This is what gets you on the path. Steps like believing that a creator exists, that God exists, and that we are created beings. Trusting that the Holy Bible is telling us the truth about reality. Deciding to believe that the God of the Bible is the creator. Seeking to learn and understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turning from your sins and self-reliance to Christ and placing your full faith in the living Lord, accepting his sacrifice as being for you. If you're hearing me today and you've never yet in your life taken those first steps, this is the place to start, right here. The other ones come later. Take these first steps And enter into a relationship with Jesus so you can get started on your own journey with him. Amen? (laughs) Then once you're on the path with Christ, there are more steps to take, some of which I've detailed there for you on this Connect card. That's why having this in hand is so important for today. I'm calling them possible next steps. By no means is this an exhaustive list of all the possible next steps. I wouldn't have room on the card to put hundreds of steps. It's just a sampling of some of the key steps that we see in Scripture that have been affirmed by people who've walked with God for a long time. They're they're not in any particular order. I've numbered them so you can make quick reference to them, number 5 or number 11 or whatever. For some of them, I'll mention a specific action that you can take right here at New Life in order to help you take that step. Ready? Ready? This might be your next step. Get baptized. Go public with your faith right up here in this baptistry with warm water, with a baptizer who's strong enough to get you back up after they dunk you. Your way of saying publicly, goodbye to the old life. I'm a new person. I have new life in Christ. That might be your next step. The Bible says believe and be baptized. I can send you some information on that. We have a class coming up shortly where you can learn more about that. And you can take that next step if that's your next step. Become a full participant, another step, in a local body of believers like they did in Acts chapter 2. Like immerse yourself in a local body of believers. And I can think of a good one. There's one right here. New Life Church. The practical part of that is taking our upcoming New Life class and becoming a ministry partner here. This is what happened with believers in the New Testament. They trusted Christ, they got baptized, and they were added to the local church. It's a very important step. How about this one? Establish the holy habit of setting aside daily time alone with God, spending time in His Word and in prayer. Is that an important step? Daily, quiet time with the Lord, soaking in his word, speaking to him in prayer, communing with the Lord. Huge step. How about this step? Becoming more equipped to share your faith with other people. Is that an important step? That may be the step that's right in front of you right now that the Lord is shining his light on. You need to be more equipped to share me with others. This is why we put together this E3 workshop that over 70 of you have already taken. It's been very helpful. I've taken it, and I I hope that you'll take one of the four offerings that we've already scheduled for this winter and spring, and I can send you the information on that, let you know when those are so you can get signed up. Here's another possible step. Seek out a discipling relationship, like I talked about, with a more mature follower of Jesus. And if you'd like, we can help you make that connection with that individual. How about this step? You know, Jesus once said, before you bring your gift to the altar, if there's something between you and another person, if there's something that's put you at odds with another believer, go first go and be reconciled to that brother or sister with whom you've been at odds. Maybe that's your next step. Maybe the reason you feel far from God is that God's saying to you, there's a horizontal relationship you need to make right. That might be a next step for some of you. Here's another one. As I said earlier, repent of an earlier misstep you took that was sinful and selfish. Maybe yesterday. Maybe this past week. Maybe 10 years ago. 
you veered off God's path and the Lord's calling you, at least in your heart, to go back to that fork in the road and say, I, I, that was so wrong, so foolish. That's the first step of getting back on the path, right? Another one, resolve to worship God more consistently in Sunday celebrations. That's this. This is the family meal. Some of us have gotten a little cavalier about Sunday worship with the family of God. This is an important resolution to make. Big step. How about this step? Pursue getting connected in a new life small group. You know, Jesus, when Jesus called people to follow him, what did he do? He gathered them together in a small group. It's just life. And, uh, oh, how about this? We got some small group leaders, I'll bet, in this room, some New Life small group leaders. Let me put you on the spot for a minute. Would you just stand? If you're a New Life small group leader, would you just stand right now? I don't even know how many are in this service. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Oh, there's all, look at that. All kinds of options. They're still standing. All kinds of options. Thank you, all of you. We appreciate your shepherding of people's hearts and caring for them. Getting connected to a new life small group. I did that for a reason, you know. (laughs) So if someone makes a beeline to you, you'll know why. Here's a step. Overcome your fear of praying out loud in the presence of others. I didn't always realize how big of a step that was for some people. Pastor Steve, you won't believe this. I prayed out loud in my small group for the first time last week. Big step for me. Yeah. Serve in a ministry in this church. Get on a ministry team here that blesses and serves your brothers and sisters in Christ. Or in a mission outside the walls of this church that blesses and serves our community and our neighbors. Maybe God's putting a new ministry on your heart this year. that He's been churning up inside of you. How about this one? This step, for some people, stretch your faith by investing your financial resources more consistently or more substantially in God's kingdom work. That's a big step. We offer a class here. It's on the front side. The information is on the front side of your Connect card. It tells you about managing your money God's way and changing times. That's a step that you might be being called to take Resolve to address harmful addictions that cause you to stray from God's path. We can make some recommendations there. Deal with the bitterness in your heart that is sapping your vitality. You're not going anywhere as long as you're harboring resentment in your heart. Really, you're not going anywhere. The Lord will keep calling you back to that. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's one of a hundred other things I haven't talked about. Maybe it's something in your family or in your role as a parent or a husband or a wife or at work. So with that in mind, I want to give you a gift this morning. No, I can't send you a text from the Lord with your specific next step. I wish I could, but I can't. (laughs) What I do want to do is give you a few moments of quiet right here, right now in God's presence to hear from the Lord. I would think that God would want his children to know what their next step is. He's a good God, right? He's a good father. I would think the Lord would want you to know what your next step is. We can't pound our fists on the gates of heaven and demand that he communicate with us in our time frame. That's not our place. But since this is the topic he's led us to today, I feel compelled to carve out some quiet moments right now for us to hear his voice speaking to our hearts So if he chooses, he can speak to us if we have ears to hear. So here's a prayer. I would urge you to pray right now. I believe it will touch God's heart and move him to reveal in his timing what he wants you to know. Lord God, please show me. Show me my next step in my walk with you. Show me, Lord. And I want to know it in order to do it, not to vote on it. Would you pray that prayer? So let's let's all quiet our hearts before the Lord right now. Bow our bow our heart, bow our heads. I give you a gift of just some quiet time to say, Lord, show me what my next step is in your plan.
Speak to your people, Lord, I pray. And thank you for doing so. The Bible says in Proverbs that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter until the full light of day. So as the Lord reveals his thoughts to you, I urge you to resolve in your heart to take that step, to take it. And as you do, you'll find the Lord then working to reveal the next step to you and the next one so that you can keep making forward progress one step at a time. And I want to add this. As a pastor, as a pastor, I'd love to know what the Lord has revealed to you at this point. And I'd love to know it so that I can pray for you. That God would give you the strength and the resolve to follow through on that next step and to act on what he has shown you. And also, if there's a new life resource that can help you in taking that next step, I can follow up on that with you as well. I so want God's best for you. And I would love the privilege, privilege of helping you continue moving forward in your journey with Jesus. So if you're willing, if you're willing to allow me to do that, to pray for you, that you would take that next step. You can take that card again and you can mark the number of what you believe to be your next step in that little green circle. You can circle it up above, but then mark just the number down in that green circle. In a moment when we sing our next worship song, you can come up, there's stations all around the room. You noticed that, didn't you? There's even baskets with pens because two-thirds of you didn't bring a pen with you this morning, and so to even fill that out, you need a pen. That's fine. We've got them all over the place, and you could go to one of these stations and, and fill this out, put that number in there. Hey, Pastor Steve, I think my next step is number five or number 11, or maybe it's something not we didn't even talk about. Just write it into that other space, and I'll gather all those up this afternoon and this week, I promise you, I will pray for you by name. That the Lord would help you take your next step with him, okay? So Lord, thank you for this time. Would I believe that you are and have been speaking to your people about their next steps? And I pray now that uh, for those that have clarity, Lord, who've kind of honed in on this next step, I pray that you would Encourage them to let me know so I can pray for them this week. Thank you, Lord, for being with us this morning. In Christ's name, amen.